نحمده و نصلي على رسوله الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. I greet you on this the first day of the blessed month of Ramadan. By the time you view this video, I greet you from my sitting room in my Caribbean island of Trinidad, uh, from my rocking chair, and my daughter has ensured that I don't rock too much in my rocking chair today. Uh, because there have been complaints about my rocking on the rocking chair. I greet you with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, a greeting of peace. And I want to entitle this talk Pakistan's Moment of Truth. It is uh, likely that by the time this video appears on uh, the internet, uh, the, the, oh, excuse me. Sometimes you hear me smacking my lips and it irritates you. It's because of dryness in the mouth. Um, the dryness in the mouth cannot be resolved unless the problem of di uh, type 2 di diabetes is resolved. So because of this dryness in the mouth, you hear me smacking my lips. But please uh, bear with me, I'm an old man. By the time this video appears on this the first day of Ramadan the Pakistan's parliament I think they call it the National Assembly I'm not a Pakistani no I'm not a Pakistani but uh, I am a Muslim and uh, Pakistan says that it was created in the name of Islam so I do have some credentials to comment on Pakistan the Pakistan National Assembly would have voted in something that they call a, a motion of no confidence. Uh, I never heard about it in the Quran. I never saw it in the Sunnah. And yet you have those who consider themselves to be political parties that are based on Islam uh, enthusiastically walking down the road into the lizard's hole with the motion of no confidence to remove the uh, sitting prime minister. Uh, whether he survives the vote or not, I don't know, uh, but it seems unlikely that he will survive the vote. And uh, the first comment I want to make is that those who have ganged up, because that's what they have done, a disparate group of people who have all different views, all different views, but they have one thing in common, a lust for power, a lust lusting for power and even if they have to sleep with the devil they will do it in order to gain power this band of people have ganged up together to try to remove a government in Pakistan what's new this is the kind of rubbish that you had from day one when Pakistan was born because it was born in the model of the Republic of Turkey complete with territorial sovereignty and national anthem and national flag and parliament and political parties and so on. The model of Turkey, this is post-Ottoman Turkey. At least the Ottoman Empire before the creation of the Republic of Turkey, at least the Ottoman Empire preserved the, the framework of a, an, uh, for Darul Islam and the Khilafah state, although they betrayed, they betrayed the Khilafah state in many ways, but the framework was there. The Sharia would attempt to maintain the Sharia was there. They were not as yet imitating the West in the creation of a modern secular state. So from the day Pakistan was born, we are accustomed to this rubbish that we now see using a motion of no confidence to remove a sitting prime minister. It's rubbish. But those who have no fidelity to the Quran, those who have forgotten the Quran, those who have forgotten the Sunnah, they now live imitating the, the most godless civilization the world has ever known. They don't know it, I know it. Modern Western civilization created by Dajjal to fulfill the jazz missions. This is modern Western civilization. Power in the hands of Gog and Magog. This is modern Western civilization. And they imitate them blindly. 
blindly. And so this is what we've had in Pakistan from day one. But we, are, we want to remind you that we have offered a comment on the Russian military intervention in Ukraine. That this is what I call, a, or some people call it, a game changer. Namely, an old world order, which has lasted for 300 years, which was one characterized by ever-increasing oppression and godlessness and decadence. Some people add nine to the 300. That world order is now coming to an end. And the effects and the implications of the Russian military intervention in Ukraine is that this is the beginning of a new world order, which will replace that old one. The defining moment would probably be the Great War. You will push Russia and push Russia and push Russia until the war takes place, but you are the one to blame for it. This new world order which is coming into being, I have understood the Quran. Of course, the Darul will never agree with me. These uh, <laughs> institutions of Islamic learning called the Darul, Darul Ulum, even Jamia to Azhar, they have the classical model of Islamic scholarship. The traditional model of Islamic scholarship, and they will never change. But Surah al Kaf of the Quran has directed me to another model of scholarship. And I follow that one, not the classical one. I recognize the classical model to have its benefits, but to be inadequate to penetrate the reality of the world in Akhir zaman the end time. Whether you be Hindu or Orthodox Christian or Muslim or Jew, it matters not. Your classical religious scholarship is an inadequate. You have to follow the model of Khidr alayhi salam in order to be able to penetrate the reality of the world in Akhir zaman And I follow this model because Iqbal, Dr. Muhammad Iqbal, he led the way. He used a, 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 a sword to cut his way brilliantly with his poetry and open a way for this new scholarship. And my teacher, may Allah bless him, Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fadl Rahman Ansar, is the one who followed Iqbal most of all. Because Iqbal called for a new model of Islamic scholarship. He said he wants a reconstruction of religious thought in Islam. The Darul Ulum can never deliver that. Never. Al Azhar University can never deliver a reconstruction of religious thought in Islam. That's what Dr. Iqbal wanted. Are you listening to me in Pakistan? All of you in Pakistan who honor and respect the Iqbal, forget your religious party to which you are aligned. Forget whether you are Sindhi or Punjabi or Balochi or, or this or that or the other. If you honor and respect Dr. Iqbal, remember what is the, the, the most important thing he left behind. He called for a reconstruction of religious thought in Islam. And no Darul Ulum in Pakistan can deliver it. Not now and not ever. Never. So who will deliver it? It was my teacher, who was a student of Dr. Iqbal. Dr. Iqbal corrected his examination paper at another at Aligarh Muslim University, and Dr. Iqbal declared that he's a born philosopher. He did he was in the Department of Philosophy of Aligarh Muslim University. Molana Dr. Muhammad Fadl Rahman and Sai read his two volume book, The Quranic Foundations and Structure of Muslim Society, and there you will find the response to Iqbal an attempt for reconstructing religious thought in Islam. And I have inherited that scholarship from Iqbal.
And from my teacher, Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fazlur Rahman Ansari. And it is because I follow this scholarship, this model of scholarship, that I have come to the conclusion Surah to the Kaf of the Quran is the preeminent surah of the Quran explaining the modern age. And in Surah to the Kaf of the Quran, Allah speaks of Zulkarnain and about two karns, not two horns. One kernel, one um, generation, one epoch, one era, one time, already passed. It is there in the Quran. A second one to come. And when the second one comes, I have explained it already. You look, you have to look in the region of Ainun Hamia, a body of water which is dark and murky. That's why it's called the Black Sea. A body of water which is dark and murky. That's why it's called the Black Sea. How many times must I repeat it? Ibn Kathir agrees it's the Black Sea. You have to look in the region of the Black Sea and Crimea commands the Black Sea. When you see power emerging in the region of the Black Sea and that power rests on the foundations of faith, and that power is resisting the oppressor. And that power is being used to liberate the oppressed, as the oppressed in Dumbas. Those who have eyes and cannot see, they have ears and cannot hear, they have hearts and yet do not understand. They're just like cattle. They have no recollection that there was oppression in Dumbas. They don't care for that. They are people who have lost the capacity to think. All that they are capable of doing is making nasty comments. That's all they can do. You cannot find any scholarship from them. Donbass was suffering oppression for seven years until Russia intervened to relieve them, to relieve them, to save them, to, to liberate them from the oppression. So when you see power emerging in the region of the Black Sea, and that power resting on the foundations of faith, and that power being used to resist the oppressor, and they don't know it, but you know it, NATO is the world's biggest oppressor today. L resisting the oppression, oppression, liberating the oppressed, then I recognize, and you, my students, we recognize, but they will never recognize that this is the second current of Karnain. And so we are now, it's a game changer, we are now at a turning point in history. Is this the time? to gang up against Imran Khan? Have you no sense in your stupid heads? Eh? This is a moment in history when history is changing. History is in transition. Which way will Pakistan go? Would it continue to be a lapdog of Yankee imperialism? Is that what the leadership of the Pakistan Armed Forces want? Is it going to continue to be a slave state? Is that what the leadership of the Pakistan Armed Forces want? Is that what the political parties want, including the so-called Islamic political party? Do you want to continue on that road? Because that is the implication of doing what you're doing at this time. At this time. The road for Pakistan in terms of foreign policy, the road for Pakistan, if you are to be faithful to truth in the Quran, that I have been explaining, the road to Pakistan is to continue to maintain the alliance with China that you had for more than 60 years now, a sensible alliance. Continue to maintain it. Build the same alliance with Russia and detach yourself from your slavish alliance with the West. Fourteen years NATO was able to transit Pakistani territory 
to go and destroy Afghanistan. Have you no shame? Those of you who filled your pockets with US dollars to allow NATO to pass through Pakistan, have you no shame? A government is changed, a new prime minister comes, and he tells you to your face, his words are like a slap on your ugly faces. He said, we're not going to fight America's war for enemy America anymore. He slapped you on your faces, and now you want revenge against him? Hmm? You fill your pockets with dollars in order to facilitate NATO. Have you no shame? The people of Pakistan are not stupid. The people of Pakistan, particularly in blessed Ramadan, I'm so happy that you made the mistake to try to bring about regime change in Pakistan with a US dollar color revolution at the beginning of Ramadan. I'm so happy you made this mistake because in this blessed Ramadan, every Pakistani who has love for the Quran, I have to use my finger for you. Every Pakistani who has love for the Quran, and that includes a Hindu Pakistani or Christian Pakistani, who loves and honors the Quran, who has, uh, <laughs> who has loyalty to truth. Every Pakistani will now, in blessed Ramadan, recognize that here was a government which was at least standing up for Pakistan. Every time a Pakistani leader has stood up for Pakistan, they've destroyed it. They destroyed the Akhazari Khan. Who celebrated his death? They destroyed Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. Who celebrated his death? They destroyed Ziyar al Haq. Who celebrated his death? They celebrated in the West. And now, who will celebrate most of all if Imran Khan is removed as Prime Minister? The United States of America will lead the celebration and then the rest of the West will lead the celebration. Have you no shame? Have you no sense in your head? If you wanted to bring about a change in government in Pakistan, you've chosen the wrong moment. You've chosen a rotten moment. And every Pakistani who listens to me will recognize that I'm correct. So then what's the way forward? I know they spent about $5 billion to bring about regime change in Ukraine. And look at the story now. I don't know how many billions they have spent to bribe these traitors. That's what they are, traitors. Who has stabbed the government in its back at this moment to bring it down. Traitors they are. I don't care two peanuts for what they say about this video and their supporters. They are traitors to take US dollars and to take bribes and to de negotiate deals to bring down a government which stood with integrity refusing to bow down to condemn Russia for doing what Russia did in Ukraine. All the Pakistani people are supporting Russia, but these traitors, that's what they are, traitors. These traitors will make a deal for a ministership or this or that or the other to bring down the government, will fill their pockets with US dollars to bring down the government. Have they no shame? They should be banished forever. No Pakistani should even shake hands with them. Again, forever. Banish them from your society. They are the scum of Pakistan. Because this is the moment that they choose to stab the government in his back. Shame on you. Shame on you. So then, what's the day forward? When they had their vote in the General Assembly, and all the ambassadors from Gog and Magog teamed up to write a letter to the Prime Minister asking that Pakistan must vote in favor of the revolution, resolution in the General Assembly. And Pakistan said to them, go jump in the Red Sea. 
We don't care two peanuts for you. This is not a slave state. And then when they imposed sanctions on Russia, and Pakistan declared, no, we will continue to maintain the, uh, business relations with Russia, as India did. And so Pakistan must pay a price for it. You want to punish Pakistan now? And so you bring about a regime change in Pakistan, a US dollar regime change in Pakistan. Listen, you don't have to tell me that this government of Pakistan made mistakes in the past. You don't have to tell me that. I share your disappointment with many mistakes that they have made. But you cannot deny that this government in Pakistan stood up as the Pakistani government should stand up against the West in the matter of Russia. You cannot tell me I'm wrong. So then, are you going to take the mistakes that Imran Khan made, in, and he made mistakes, yes? Use those mistakes to now stumbling in, in his back at a moment when history is changing? Have you no sense? Is this the Jamaat Islami of Maulana Maududi? I'm sorry I have to call your name. Have you no sense in your head? Don't you have leaders who have a capacity for insight? And so I expect that the government will fall. I expect that this gang of bribery and corruption will now take over Pakistan. It's back to square one. Business as usual, Mr. 10%. Hmm? The gang will now fight each other for the, for the dinner table. We want this, we want that, we want the other. We'll stop. We'll watch and see them fighting for the dinner table. But what's the way forward? The way forward is Pakistan. I have come to say to you that the moment of truth has arrived for Pakistan. In fact, the moment of truth arrived many years ago. It's now become even clearer than before. The moment of truth for Pakistan has arrived. You must not give your support to any political party. You must not give your support from this day on to any political leader unless and until he declares that we recognize absolute truth to be located in the Quran. That is the first step forward. There is much more that will come as implication from that first step. But I need not spend the time at this time to explain it all. But if a political leader or a political party refuses to declare, we recognize absolute truth to be located in the Quran. And we recognize truth to be located in the Hadith only to the extent that it is in harmony with the Quran and not in conflict with the Quran. Do not give your support, not even to Imran Khan, nobody. Don't give your support to anybody. And if any political leader comes forward and says, yes, we now agree, even though we didn't have the courage to say it before, we are now declaring the way forward for Pakistan, the first step is that we declare absolute truth is located in the Quran. And we, we, we are prepared now, sincerely so, to try to work out a road for Pakistan, the conduct of state in Pakistan, which is faithful to absolute truth located in the Quran. Once they give that pledge, then the next step that we are going to deal with is the Pakistani rupee, but we're not going to talk about that now. And so I wish you in Pakistan to do me a favor. Take this talk of mine and translate it. Put the subtitles in Urdu. Put the subtitles in Sindhi. Put the subtitles in Pashto. Put the subtitles in Balochi. Put the subtitles in all the other languages of Pakistan. But most of all in Urdu. And then reach this lecture out to the people of Pakistan and all the platforms that are available to you on the internet. Because I understand somebody told me 
Every Pakistani now has access to the internet. It has its bad danger, it also has benefits. So please reach this talk out to the political parties as well, so that they must know you have to take a decision on the Quran, otherwise Pakistan will not support you. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.